Today, Bitcoin drops below the $70,000 level to end the week. Sam Bankman Fried appeals his fraud conviction, and the criminal investigation chief at the IRS breaks down what you need to know when it comes to crypto and filing your taxes as the deadline looms. Welcome to CNBC's Crypto World, I'm Jordan Smith. Digital currencies are back in the red to close out the week. Bitcoin dipped just under 1% over the past 24 hours after testing the $72,000 level a little more than a day ago. Ether fell right around 2% back to the $3,400 mark, and Solana fell 3.5% back below $170. Looking out across the week, we got some economic data that pushed back on expectations that we would see a rate cut from the Federal Reserve in the coming weeks. Consumer prices rose more than expected in March, while wholesale prices rose less than expected. That data left Wall Street concerned about lingering inflation, and that brought down the Dow and the S&P. Crypto, though, seems unfazed. Over the past seven days, Bitcoin's risen 2.5%, while Ethereum's risen more than 3%. Solana is an outlier, falling more than 4.5%. Now looking ahead, the market is also preparing for the Bitcoin halving, which could come sometime in the next week. That won't mean much for investors in the near term, in the hours after the cut to mining rewards actually happens, but it's expected to move markets higher longer term thanks to tighter supply. The Bitcoin miners, though, they will see an impact more directly, of course, as mining rewards will get slashed. Looking at some of the publicly traded miners, they are mixed over the past week. Riot and Marathon are in the red, while CleanSpark is moving higher as of noon Eastern. Now, other things to look out for next week? Well, economic indicators like retail sales, plus the Federal Reserve's Beige Book, which will give more detail into how the Fed sees economic conditions across its regional banks. All right, let's talk about the top stories. Sam Bakeman fried filed an appeal for his fraud conviction and 25-year prison sentence. No surprise here, lawyers for the FTX founder filed the notice of appeal yesterday, two weeks after the 32-year-old was sentenced in U.S. District Court in Manhattan in order to pay $11 billion in forfeiture for the massive fraud at the crypto exchange and its sister hedge fund Alameda Research. The appeal will be heard in the Second District U.S. Court of Appeals in Manhattan. Typically, the odds of criminal defendants having their convictions overturned in federal court is pretty low, winning reversals in fewer than 10% of appeals. If SBF loses, he would have to petition the Supreme Court to take the case. Next up, Hong Kong could approve spot Bitcoin and Ether exchange-traded funds as soon as Monday. According to Bloomberg, a partnership between Bocera Asset Management and Hashkey Capital is reportedly among the issuers expected to get the green light for the ETFs, which invest directly into Bitcoin and Ether. We told you earlier this week that regulators reportedly sped up the process for approvals to bring the ETFs to market much faster than the industry expected. Reuters reported that at least four Chinese and Hong Kong asset managers have submitted applications for these new funds. All right, let's talk about taxes for our main story. Tax day in the US is on Monday, April 15th, and if you haven't filed your individual tax return yet, you're probably scrambling to get that done over the weekend. The IRS is of course also hard at work tracking down tax crimes, and while at the Chainalysis Lynx conference in New York City this week, Crypto World spoke with Guy Fico, the criminal investigation chief at the agency. He says the asset class and crypto-linked tax crimes might be growing, but the IRS is prepared. So crypto and, and virtual currencies have been part of uh, investigations that IRS criminal investigation has conducted for years. And it has been predominantly uh, a part of other larger frauds. So there could be, uh, whether it was scams, embezzlement, money laundering, crypto was, has been utilized to advance those frauds. What we're seeing more of now and more in our current inventory is more of the pure crypto tax crimes. And these would be Title 26, which is federal income tax violations, uh, specifically involving the crypto. This could be uh, purely not reporting income generated from crypto sales. It could be um, uh, hiding the true basis or, or shielding the true basis in crypto. So that's an area that we've seen an uptick and I anticipate uh, we're gonna see more of and there's gonna be more charged uh, Title 26 crypto cases here uh, in this year and going forward. And the agency is getting more aggressive in tracking down crypto tax evasion. In February, the agency, along with the DOJ, brought criminal charges focused solely on unpaid taxes on cryptocurrencies for the first time. The IRS accused a Texas man of failing to report $4 million in Bitcoin for two years and failing to pay taxes on the gains from those crypto holdings. The agency also hired experts to focus on this asset class. 
And the IRS isn't tracking down these alleged crypto crimes on its own either. It has partners in the crypto industry to help track down bad actors. Obviously, we're at Chainalysis, uh, Lynx event, and Chainalysis, along with several other um, uh, partners, have been very helpful uh, in us, in IRS, and other law enforcement agencies, uh, sort of cracking the code. Um, I would say the partnership aspect of that, the public-private partnership aspect of that, whereas my IRS special agents um, all have account, predominantly all have accounting degrees and are phenomenal at chasing, tracing, and, and following money. But some of the tools and some of the applications that are needed when we start uh, investigating in the crypto world with obfuscation of, of true ownership, that's where the, the um, expert support of companies like Chainalysis and others and those tools and applications allow my special agents to then utilize that to move forward uh, and, and, and determine whether or not a crime has been committed. We've seen some pretty big seizures of crypto from the IRS and other U.S. law enforcement agencies in recent years. So we asked Fico what he expected going forward as crypto only gets more popular. Crypto has been involved in some of the biggest seizures the United States government has ever seen. And certainly over the last couple of years, IRS criminal investigation has been the agency who's been doing those, those seizures. Um, I have not seen anything that would make me think that those would dissipate. Um, I do think, as I said earlier, that the use of crypto is becoming more pervasive. And I think there are going to be some more pure tax uh, cases that are going to come forward. And I do think in terms of some of the scams, some of the phone scams and romance scams and pig butchering and items such as that, I, can, I think that crypto is going to both maintain and probably have a larger um, part of those frauds as fraudsters try to, to prey on, on innocent uh, taxpayers. But let's go back to you. Let's say you have crypto sitting in a wallet or maybe you sold your crypto for cash to buy a new car. How should you properly report your holdings to the IRS? Well, the basic rule of thumb is as an asset, when you acquire an asset, you have a basis in the asset. And when, that, when you then dispose of that asset, in this case, the purchasing of, a, of another uh, home or car or anything, um, the, the point where you sold is your disposition. So that difference, if you, if you acquired something and it cost you $10,000 and you sold it at $20,000, you have a $10,000 gain. If that period of time was more than one year, that would be treated as a long-term capital gain. Less than one year, that would be a short-term capital gain or taxed at the ordinary income rate. All right, that's all for Crypto World this week. We'll be back again on Monday and we'll see you then.